Hello, hello. We are live, everyone. Welcome to Bigfoot Odyssey's The Lake Show. I'm your host, Brad Hatcher, and with me tonight is the purveyor of Bigfoot wisdom and haikus, Mark Newell. Mark, how are you? I'm doing well, Bradley. I thought you would wear your favorite shirt for me tonight, but I guess you didn't. You know, I thought about wearing pink, but I you know, kind of brought out this one, my fishing shirt, so... Kind of threw a curveball since I don't have a 168 hours shirt, <laughs> you know, and, um, I'm sorry. It's, uh, it's, it's in the mail someplace. Yeah. Well, maybe one day you'll be high enough on the food chain. I'm, I'm hoping so. And as you guys know, Mark is, is with beast TV and let everyone know in the chat, this is a, a family friendly show. So keep it clean or else our moderators, which we think are the best will escort you out. But with us tonight, we have our guest is Jay C, and he's from an area north of Texas. Welcome, Jay. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I'm trying to figure out how to get my Bluetooth on my deal here because I can barely hear you guys. Okay. Well, I can with, hear uh, you, Okay, we're having a, a few broadcast snafus, which happens from time to time especially when carrie's not here it seems like they always happen to me <laughs> so I, I don't know if that means anything carrie could you know throwing me a little curveball from not here he has uh had to go up to lubbock to do some work this weekend so that's why i have mark with us uh tonight with jay and jay can you hear us better now uh, i'm working on it okay well as you guys know, Mark was with us down in Florida, and, and, down in Florida and, and oop, I hear that echo. Oop, I hear that echo. Oh no! Yeah, I might want to yeah, might kick, uh, the Bluetooth. The Bluetooth. Switching the Bluetooth. That's where the echo came from. Yep. So we'll uh, key in the Bluetooth and then get this uh, experience, this Odyssey, underway, and Jay will be back. So how's your week been, Mark? It's been pretty good, Bradley. It's been really hot here, humid. I'm, I know that you've been experiencing that. We've talked a couple of times this week, but we did get some uh, thunder showers today. So that kind of helped cool everything off. Well, uh, hopefully we're going to get it. We're supposed to have a cold front in tomorrow, and I know everybody's excited about the weather in Texas and Tennessee, but... We've been kind of fortunate this summer. We haven't, it hasn't been really that hot like it's been, heck, on the Pacific Northwest and the the East Coast and where, where you are. So for that, I'm, I'm thankful. And here, Jay is back, so let me add him. Jay, can you hear us? I can. Perfect, perfect. So, uh, Carrie, thank you for your, your wisdom on the, on the text as usual and let's uh let's start this thing first off jay thank you very much for for coming on i know that you have a lot of interesting stuff going on at your place and i guess you know let's let's start it off did you know first question the obvious question was did you ever believe in sasquatch before about a year ago i did i always have i guess um you know, all, all the Patterson Gimlin stuff, all the regular stuff. I watch shows on it. I, I didn't disbelieve it. I just didn't believe it would ever be anything I would ever deal with. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's one of those deals, uh, just like a bunch of my neighbors now. Um, they know me. They know I'm a truthful guy, but they're hunters. And because, and, and I'm a hunter. And because they haven't seen something in all their years, they have a hard time with it, as I would have. Right. Um, but that all changes once you have these experiences. And, and at some point, it doesn't really matter if people don't believe you or haven't had experiences, and it, it just doesn't matter anymore. That's, uh, that's really true. And there's no telling what they could be experiencing as well and are just feeling comfortable about talking about it. And that's why... You know, today, especially being Friday the 13th, what you've been going through is just harrowing, to say the least. And, you know, start us off from about a year ago when all this started happening to you. 
Yeah, and I I, I kind of tried to do some dates just to keep keep me on track. I know it's not going to matter for you guys, right? Um, but and and there were things that were going on before these dates that I found out later from my cams and different stuff. But I'm just going to give it to you like how I experienced it, and uh, um, there were a, a couple small things that happened to me before that now I think maybe could have been something different but possibly not other than that I didn't have like what Carrie had and a lot of people have where they go back and they go oh man all that stuff was happening and I was ignoring it I didn't really have that I didn't have you know all these tree knocks and different things happening that I blew off before at least I don't remember that right um so from the beginning from where it starts when I'm thinking can this be what I think it is was um, either late July or probably early August last year and uh, I gotta I gotta kind of give you the, the lay of the land you you guys have seen the pictures but um, um, I'm keeping that stuff kind of private but of course. Um, just to give you an idea I'm about a mile off the main road out in the woods pretty deep woods and by a river um, a lot of ledges, a lot of swamps, uh, some highland, lots of just woods. And across from me is hundreds, if not thousands of acres of, of land that there's nobody on. Just mm -hmm. nobody on. Is it private so, land or is it uh, like a refuge or wildlife area? Uh, there's. I don't want to get specific about it, but there's no one living out there. Okay. There's no there's no private stuff going on. Okay. So it's, I mean, people can go out there. Nobody really does. Um, I mean, there might be a few people hunt, hunting out there, but as far as um, trails and roads and stuff, that's not really happening out there. Okay. So, anyways, that's that's kind of the setup of the you know it's 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 very deep wood stuff. So, anyways, I'm sitting in my shack and. Uh, I've got, I'm off grid out there, so I have power in the form of a generator or battery lights inside. And uh, it was around 10 o'clock and I was, I think I was watching a movie on the DVD or whatever. And um, I'm sitting by the window and it's a, it's a warm day. So I've got all the windows open and I'm, I start hearing this knocking and it's like three knocks and it's, it's your typical, what people call wood knocking. And of course, we don't know if that's what it is. It's like three knocks and then a couple minutes and then four knocks and a few minutes and then three knocks. And I'm hearing this and I'm like, at first, I'm completely blowing it off. I'm watching my movie. And I, I don't even know what to think. So I'm not thinking. Right. And then I, I can't not listen to it anymore. So I turn the DVD off. And I'm listening, and this is going on for probably 30, 40 minutes. And I'm listening it, to it. And you had your windows open, right? Yeah. My, I'm sitting right next to a window. Okay. And where all this activity is, I have a fairly steep hill down from my shack, and then it's kind of a swamp area, and then it goes up into an area that's pretty woodsy. And right. if you were to shoot directly across from there, it's probably no more than 150 yards across, okay. 200 at the most. So it's not that far. And that's where all this, I can, I can picture exactly where it's coming from, this, these knocks. It's not that far away. Right. And, and people like yourself on your own land can kind of tell where stuff is coming from in general yeah. anyway. So I've been uh, going I, out. I get land. that. I've been going out to this land since I was a little kid. So I know every part of this land. Okay. And, and I can tell it's on one of my trails. It's, it just is. And I'm thinking somebody's just screwing with me, you know? So uh, after a while, just, it, it, it started getting into my head, like Bigfoot stuff. And it started to bug me. So I just turned the DVD player back on shut the drapes, shut the windows, did my thing for the night, went to sleep. It was fine. Got up the next morning. Nothing's going on. 
So then the next night, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, is there, it, and, and I hope I'm not jumping the gun on this, but you know, when this started, something happened that you kind of attributed to the possibility of Sasquatch getting a little active yeah. or more than so, normal. And, and I hadn't got into that thinking yet, but yeah. So what the deal was is there was some pretty heavy logging going on across the river on that mm -hmm. land. And, and they were logging over there even on Sundays throughout the day. And they had cutter fellers and everything. So it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, Jim Bob out there just cutting a few trees. They were doing some logging and, and I have no problem with logging. Right. I'm just saying that that's what was going on. And I didn't put any of this together until later on because I really had no reason to think about it. I just thought it was, I was trying to figure out how to not think it was what I thought it was. Okay. So anyways, the next night, same deal around 10 o'clock it starts. And I happened to be on the phone with my girlfriend at the time. And I don't know if I had told her about the stuff the night before we were trying to figure this out the other day for a timeline. But anyways, I'm talking to her and this is going on and I go, Hey, I'm, I'm getting kind of freaked out here, you know? And I was, I was really starting to get upset about it because it was going on and on and it, it was going on for like an hour. And after I got done talking with her, I was getting more freaked out about it because I'm out there alone. And you know, here's the deal, man. I'm out there. I love, being out there i built right. that place to be out there alone yeah. that was the whole purpose last year i had seven bear out there seven different bear I, one of them's over 400 pounds i've got wolves that frequent you guys have seen the pictures i have wolves that come up to my doorstep i'm not afraid of those animals i'm not stupid around them but they don't frighten me i i, I just don't you know Right, and anyway, since you grew up there, you know, with that right. around you, it's just, you know, common, common stuff. Yeah. It's, it's like anybody that goes out in the woods, they know what animals are out there. They take precautions and done deal. You don't think about it. Right. And you know what, if something does happen and, and, and I'm, I, I carry, so I always have something with me. So again, not too worried about it. Well, anyways, this stuff starts really bugging me. So I grab my little nine mil and I, I threw a 10 rounder in there, just target stuff. And I, I went out on my deck and I popped off 10 rounds into the dirt and I, and it stopped and I thought, good, done deal. You know, don't have to right. deal with that anymore. So I went back into the shack and five minutes later, it starts right back up again. Three knocks, a couple minutes, four knocks, a couple minutes, two knocks, three knocks. And it was, it was just random. Was it all from the same area or different areas? Spot. Same spot. The vast majority uh -huh. of everything that's going on is coming from that spot. That's trippy. Not all of it, but a lot of it. Right. So, again, I cranked up the DVD player and had the lights on. And, you know, next day, nothing. No worries. I'm out doing what I'm doing. And that was the weekend. So, you know, I'm, I'm in the back of my head thinking there's only two ways that can happen. Somebody's out there or it's what I think it is. And, and I told you guys before, I don't live in Scooby-Doo Scooby land, you know, and, and there ain't old Mr. Johnson trying to get me off my land. Yeah. Right. And it's probably not a good it. idea because I am heavily armed. And I am Understand. not afraid to take care of it, you know? Right. So it would be pretty, you know, if I was out there doing that and somebody unloaded 10 rounds, that's the end of it for me. I'm not messing around with that guy. Right. So. Right. I mean, that's a, you know, especially initially right off the bat, 10 rounds in the ground. If somebody's screwing with you, they're, they're going to go. Yeah. Yeah. If it's, if it's a human. Right. Yeah. Well, exactly, Mark. That's <laughs> exactly if it's a human. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I tell you what, I would give anybody 
10 grand to take all this stuff away from me and wipe my memory so I could go back in the woods like I used to. And it's not that I don't go out there, but I don't often go out there alone at night. I won't stay out there alone at night anymore. And I, I'm not as comfortable in the woods during the day. I still do mm-hmm. it, but it's changed. Yeah. It's, it's completely changed. Yeah. I mean, so, you'll, as long as, as long as you have light, you'll be out there. And then once it gets dark, that's when it's, it's, it seems like they become agitated. Yeah. Well, so, well, so ha- has anything else, have they done anything else? Which I know yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I was out there and that was August. So September is uh, early goose season for us. And uh, a good buddy of mine was out there and, you know, we're out fixing up the duck blind and doing all our stuff during the day. No problems. And I'm, I told them what's going on. You know, I, I'm going to let people know. I, I'm not going to put somebody in a situation where something happens and, and then I go, yeah, that's been going on. I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to let people know. And if they want to ridicule me, that's fine. Whatever. Um, they know at that point I've given them the knowledge, right? Right. So not and these are people that day. you trust anyway, yeah, that, that, that you're close bringing out friends. there. Right. Close friends. I don't just bring anybody out there. Right. But so, um, we're there and, and I've got my sound out there. So my thing is, you know, we work till dark or work or play or whatever. And uh, do some shooting, whatever. And then we take sauna at night. So we took our sauna and, you know, I've got a deck. So, you know, finish sauna thing. You come out and stand on the deck. You're naked and go back in and come out and go back in and come out. Nothing's going on. We go back in and, and uh, we watch a movie. And I'm, I'm kind of already a little bit unnerved out there. So I'm, I want to stay up later. So I don't get woken up, you know, it's just one of those deals. Yeah. But anyway, I finally fall asleep and around three in the morning, I hear, well, wait, I got to, I missed a part here. So my buddy is curious and he was in the shack and he goes, so what, what does it sound like when that knocking happens? And it's all poplar trees and stuff out there, right? So, I, mm-hmm. and I cut pop for my firewood and I have wet stuff and dry stuff. I grabbed a a wet piece of firewood and I went up to a poplar tree and I I banged it three times really hard. And I said, it sounds just like that. So anyways, later that night around three in the morning, I hear, I wake up to the most violent pounding on a tree that I can't even imagine. I don't care how big something is. I don't care how big of a tree they're nailing, if that's what they're doing. I can't imagine anything being able to make this much noise. And the way I described it to him was it was violent and it seemed like it was aimed towards me. And so I'm, I wake up to this, just I'm awake and all, all the windows are open and this noise is going on. And I'm, I'm at first I'm like, Hey, Hey, Hey. And I'm, I'm whispering his name. And then pretty soon I'm standing over him yelling at him. And he's not waking up. And this thing, it's going on. It's continuous. It's bam, 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 bam. And it's getting in my head now. And this is the only time this has happened in all of this stuff. But, and I can't describe it well, but they were in my head. And they were saying, you need to leave over and over. And I I can't describe that it was a voice. I can't tell you that it wasn't just, I have a really hard time describing it, but it was over and over and over. Like I couldn't get it out of my head and then it stopped and he woke up and I'm yelling at him. They're, they're in my head. They're in my head. I'm yelling his name. They're in my head. They're in my head. And he's freaking out now because I'm losing my mind and all the lights are on. I, I turned them on. They weren't on before. And he's like, what's going on? What's going on? And, and I'm losing my mind. And so we got all the lights on. I turn the radio on. And we're talking about it and stuff. And he calms me down. And eventually, you know, we lay down. And I didn't really sleep much. But next day we do our thing again. 
we go out to the duck blind and, you know, we just did what we do. And uh, same deal again. Worked till dark. Took sauna. Went back in. Watched a movie. He always falls asleep early, so I'm watching movies by myself. Right. And again, about three in the morning, we both get woke up this time. But something pounded my side of the shack where I sleep so hard that things were falling off the wall. And he wakes up and he yells, what the F was that? And I said, I don't know what the F that was. And he goes, well, I haven't heard that. And we both got up and we both had our guns in our hands and the lights are on and we're freaking out and we're yelling. And that was it. It was just that one pound. But I'm telling you what, again, there ain't no person that could have hit that so hard that it did what it did. So right, and, and, and you, you, just real, real quick, you sent a picture with it that shows the kind of material the outside yeah. of your uh, here, and I'll just put this up real quick, just so everyone can can know. It's it's a you know typical metal. Yeah, yeah, that's siding. steel side. Yeah, so it's it's that's actually on my shed door, but that's the same material. Okay. And, and, you know, you told me that, that when you constructed this thing, that you yeah. constructed it, I mean, sturdy or you know, get out, so nothing yeah. can get yeah. through Yeah, uh, really, really sturdy uh, construction. So uh, yeah. give that interruption. I just wanted them to people in the chat to see. Yeah. What, it's not, uh, it's, it's not some tiddly wank deal. It, it's, it's built like a house. Right. So, yeah. And, and I'm telling you, you have to do a lot to move stuff on the inside. And so anyways, we're freaking out. And, and I, I grab my 45 and my heavy-duty light. And I was going outside. And I'm like, he goes, what are you doing? I go, I got to see. Because he was, he was like, it had to be a branch. And I go, there's no branches. And I'll describe this to you guys, too. I had to cut all the trees that were directly near my shack because we have these tent caterpillars. And what they do is they eat the leaves on the trees, which were hanging over my shack before. And then they poop all over the roof. Well, I collect water from my roof. So I can't have that. Right. So there are no water and stuff. Yeah. There are no trees next to my shack and it was dead calm anyway. And there's nothing leaning that could have fallen in. But I, for his sake, I went around the shack and made sure there was nothing there. And there wasn't. And he was freaking out that I went out. He, he was not going outside. And I'm not really sure why I did either, but I did. And uh, the next morning, he went out and looked. And there's no tracks. There's no marks. There's no nothing. So I don't know. I don't know what it was, but I have a feeling I know. Right. So All, all signs are pointing. Yeah. Right. Uh, I would like to go back a little bit. Um, a year ago, when you first started experiencing this, and you talked about, um, I don't think you said clear cutting, but they were doing major cutting. Yeah. Yeah. How close is that to your cabin? Close enough that I could hear them doing it, but I can't see what they've done. Uh -huh. And I've crossed the river and I haven't seen where they were exactly, but they were doing a fair amount. It was weeks at a time. So I'm not there all the time, usually weekends and sometimes during the week, but I mean, they were out there consistently for quite a while, so they were cutting a bunch. But it wasn't but like right next to the river. Yeah, but if they were using a fell fell and all the serious logging stuff, they were they yeah. were clearing a lot of acres. Yeah, but they were taking some acres for sure. Yeah, right. Yeah. What What would you say is the population around you? Is there like five ha houses or cabins within? two miles of you or is it more populated than that or less populated? I would say that would be a good number. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there, 
it's it's not desolate, but like I said, I'm a mile back. Right. So um, there's a few places across the river and up. So they would be, as a crow flies, a good mile from me. There's a couple um, hunting areas that are closer to me, but uh -huh. they aren't usually around and they're closer to the road. So. so it sounds like even when people are hunting, you probably don't even hear gunshots it's so far away no you can i mean you know how far okay. gunshot travels but well yeah but I, I i thought of that I right when i said it so i don't I, see I retract people. yeah right. i i don't see people when i'm out there if if i do they're trespassing and we're gonna have a, some words but other than that no i've got i've got a substantial amount of acres there okay Basically, that, I'm I'm overseeing about a hundred acres there. That sounds like a common denominator, with right. the clear cutting, and I'm wondering if in their minds that you were getting blamed for it. Yeah, and and uh, we talked about that earlier, Brad and I, and and. Uh, the thing is, is I'm out there doing what I'm doing and I'm not going to stop what I'm doing. And, and part of that is I have a lot of dead wood that I need to cut and there's trees that I need to cut for projects and trails and whatnot. And I'm not going to stop doing that, but they could obviously take that to that, you know, here's another one of those people ruining our home. You know, I, I don't know what they think like, right. but uh, it seems I, logical, I'm not stop doing what I'm doing. Because then I give up. I might as well just, you know, sell. I'm not right. doing that. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Okay, well, t t get, tell us, you know, because cause from what I'm gathering, it kind of escalated a little bit, you know, after yeah. every time you were going out. So if you can elaborate on that, that'd be great. Yeah, so... After that, um, it was, this is where it gets kind of hard for me. We'll take your time. So, mm -hmm. so duck hunting was coming up, you know, we were out prepping for duck season, my buddy and I, but my girlfriend's boys have come out there for, I think it was three years before that. And basically I got them into duck hunting and deer hunting and, and now they've just kind of taken off and they're doing it and they're, they're probably better hunters than I am at this point. So anyways, um, I'm struggling with this whole idea of what do I do? Cause do I tell them or not tell them? Cause if I tell them, they might not want to come out. And if I don't tell them and something happens, that's no good. So I talked to my girlfriend and stuff and she said, well, you're going to have to make that decision. You know, you know what is best or, what you're feeling and about a week before season I had to take them upstairs and and sit them down and I was really general about what was going on I said there's just some really odd things that are happening and it's bothering me and I just wanted to let you guys know and and uh, you know it's up to you if you want to come out there or not I, I'll understand if you don't it's it's pretty freaky stuff and and I didn't I didn't allude to anything specifically and I think they gathered what it was and the, the thing that sucks is they haven't been out there since and I don't blame them I don't blame them and uh that sucks right because you know a horrible byproduct of, of you having to deal with this that was the thing that we really did together that was our you know guys time Right. Oh, no, it's doing our own thing. You know, um, you know how it it's is. Bonding. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just a great bonding experience. Yeah. And, and we just got into uh, just, it was fun. It was a good time. Uh -huh. And now that hasn't happened for deer or duck or grouse or anything. So, you know, my, my mom, one buddy still comes out, but we don't go out early in the morning anymore. And we hunt, uh, we duck hunt in a different area because to get to my duck blind, I have to go through that area and I just won't do it in the dark. I just won't. 
And uh, that's, you know, I, I was telling Carrie too. I said, I hate to even bring this up because to me, it's not as big of a deal, but I know that I have kind of a trauma from this and it's, and it's affecting other parts of my life as well too, you know, and there's other things that have happened. It's not just this stuff, but it, it's, uh, it's definitely affected how I do things and what I think and, and, you know, do I want to go camping and do I want to do this or that? And, you know, it's a bummer the people that are dealing with this yeah. stuff. And then on top of that, if you tell people, and I've told good friends of mine, and and it's not that they're making fun of me or anything, but, you, you know, you feel like, do I want to tell people and ruin their outdoors time too, you know? Right. And, and that's on top of the, if they're going to believe you or not. Right. Yeah, it's it's. I think we all have run up against that, and that's that's, you know, one thing you be you coming on the show helps because it'll give you know the courage that, that that you took to come on t tonight was a lot, and you know we just hope that you know if if it helps one person it's it's worth it, and it's uh, you know it's just very courageous of you to, you to do this because you're in a you're in a safe area and. You know, especially, you know, with Mark here with me, uh, co-hosting, you know, you couldn't be in better hands right now, you know, and, and uh, Carrie's talked to you a lot too. So, yeah. And I, I appreciate this totally. And, uh, I mean, I even, I watched, uh, I watched one of your shows the other night and, uh, you know, it's so just to get to know you guys. And, and I've spent a lot of time talking with Brad and Carrie and, and I, you know, you get that I'm at home kind of feeling. And that's, that's nice to have in this. It is a, a really big deal to be able to say this stuff and, and know, <laughs> to know that people get it, which in a way sucks too. Right. Because I know it's affected. I know, I know how Carrie feels going out in the woods. I get it. I, you know, it's terrible. Well, you're not the first person that this has happened to. Right. And this Bigfoot Odyssey is very grounded. And this is one thing that I like about conversations that I've had with Carrie that you can, the more you talk about something, the better therapy it is going to be for you. And if you can talk to other people that has gone through this it will help you daniela and she uh called me not long ago wanting to come up with a program kind of set up a blueprint for helping people out there and i think that being able to talk to other people that has gone through this can can help you with your coping skills that's that's so true and I, I think that you know one of the things when Carrie and I were talking to Jay you know getting to know each other you know it was a vetting process you know not us with Jay or not Jay with us I mean but you know us with Jay would Jay feel comfortable about coming on here so you know it's I guarantee you're going to help somebody Jay and and you know hopefully you know, somebody else comes forward that's having something and says, Hey, I tried this or, you know, have you tried that or, or something of that nature that, that might help. But I kind of diverged with that. Um, but it's, 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 it's escalated some. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, at, at first, after this stuff started going on, there, there was a lot more knocking that was kind of a consistent thing. And then that turned into happening during the day. And it happened when I would get there. Um, my, if you, if you go up on my steps to my door, you, if you look over, you're looking at the spot where most of this stuff is happening. And I'd get up on the steps and I'd be putting my key in and I'd hear knocking. Uh -huh. And sometimes I would, I would just yell, you know, yeah, I get it. You know, you, you get to that point where 
you almost get pissed off and it's easy to be pissed off in the day when you're, you know, <laughs> it's a lot different at night. But during the day, I'd be like, you know, what, guys, leave me alone during the day. You already have the night. Just just leave me alone, you know. And uh, sometimes I would fire off some rounds, not at them, but, you know, just to. And, I, and that's the other thing. I go, that's my hunting shack. And I go out there and I'm a guy that carries. So I like to be proficient with any firearm I have. So I do, I do a lot of shooting out there and I'm not going to stop shooting. You know, people say, you know, well, you're, you know, you're being aggressive. No, I'm being me. Yeah. I'm just going out there doing what I do. And I ain't going to stop doing that. And I bet they know what you do anyway. You know, they, yeah, they've, I, they've probably been out there so long that, you know, they've been they, watching. They, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Mark. They've, been, they've been watching you for years and I wouldn't necessarily stop what my normal routine my simple pleasures of life out there um just a suggestion that it, if they go to knocking at night you might try to consider not firing rounds off in that direction uh you might want to just step out in the porch and talk to them. And, but I think that they could see that as a sign of aggression, but they probably have been watching you firing guns for years out there. And they don't think nothing about that. They don't see that as being aggressive. But it's yeah. just some, something to think about. And I I know that it's hard because it's real easy for somebody to sit in the back seat of a car and tell someone how to drive when yeah. you're not there in person and it's happening to you because it's real. I can assure you that when you're out there in the middle of the woods and activity starts ramping up, it's real. It's really real, but the way that you react is what's going to cause them to react in a certain way. Yeah, and, you know, I, I agree with you, but at the same point, you know, I, I got that one buddy of mine that was out there. He told a lady he, she knows, and uh, she's like, oh, you just got to be friends with them. They're all, you know, they're just friendly. They just want to be, you know. I was like, all right, you can come out and camp out in the middle of the woods and, and you tell me how friendly it is because to me, a friend don't come up and pound on my shack, throw stuff at me, you know, yelling, doing all that, carrying on and whatnot. That's not what I do to my friends. And I, I get it. They're different or whatever. I don't understand it. But I didn't invite this. I, if if right. The weird thing is, is, you know, they're they're so elusive, right? Could have been pretty elusive staying on the other side of the river. Didn't need to come and bang on my shack and throw stuff. I mean, well, and, and, I don't know and, what and, that, you know. And, and when you say throw stuff, what what intensity or what you know? What exactly were they were they doing? Well, I'll, I should get back on track here because it kind of my timeline is getting off here. But okay, so yeah, take um, your time. Getting back to the point of they've been there for years. And I, I think um, I sent you guys pictures of the trees that have been twisted and they're still growing and stuff. And then there's, right, there's four trees and you know, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of things happen in nature that can be, it's just nature, but I've got like four or five trees within 60 feet of my shack that are bent at nineties and then go back up okay. again. And uh, Hold on. yeah, that's, there's like, yeah, those are, on, yeah, that's, that's my main trail that goes out to the river. And so there has been now trail. four, four branches and trees that have been snapped onto the trail. One of them was hanging directly over the trail at about nine feet up. Another one, that one you're looking at there that was bent over and there, there's just no reason for that to break. Like this one right that here. Was, 
Yeah, that was that was the first one I ever noticed. That was in July, but I never thought anything of it. I just took a picture of it because it kind of looked funny there. And here, I wasn't. Your... That yeah, that was just that one was recently. That's been within a month. Okay, here's here's one that's just yeah, that's creepy. Right that's right in my yard. There's like four of those. And the thing is, so I get nature. Those things can happen. But right. four of them within 60 feet of my shack, that seems kind of odd. So I don't know if I pissed them off by putting my shack where I did or what. I don't know if they've been there for a while. And I'm not saying that's what that is because I don't know that. I don't. I have no idea. But the four trees that are broken over, that's, you know, if you were to take any one of these things alone, I don't think it's a big deal. But when they start stacking on top of each other, that's when it's really hard to go. Yeah, that's just somebody messing with me. Right. You know what I mean? No, you're exactly I right. Tried, I tried. I tried to hang on to that for a long time. And I wish I still could. And now my girlfriend is at the point where she's not a believer anymore. She's a knower. And that sucks. Yeah. Because for a long time, even though she believed me, she could still go out there and, and, you know, make up stuff in her head that it wasn't this or that, but then things happen and that ain't no more. And that's, that sucks. But anyways. Yeah. So like w when, when it started escalating, you know, after that, that one uh, evening of work, you know, took a, just went crazy when your buddy was there, you know, w w how, how did it, what started happening next? I mean, did they stay the same or? or... Well, there, there was times that nothing happened. And there were times when little things would happen. And there were times when it would just be knocking. And a lot of times it would just be knocking during the day. Um, I'll tell you one time I was out there and this wasn't too long after it started happening. I was out. I was there by myself still. This is when I would still go out there alone. And I was taking a sauna and it's dark out. And I've got a big floodlight on my sauna. It comes over my deck and it kind of lights up the whole area. But it doesn't light up the woods to the side. So the deck ends and about eight feet from where the deck ends is where the woods start. And you can't really see in there from that light. Well, anyways, I'm hanging out there. And I'm, uh, you know, I'm out there naked on the deck and I'm doing my thing, my sauna thing, just cooling off for a bit and... And I'm sitting there, and you have to understand that this roof is a shed roof, and it, it goes down away from the deck. It angles the other way. Uh -huh. Right. And there's a lip on it. I do my own metal and stuff. There's a lip. So if there was something on that roof, it couldn't even go across. Besides, it was a completely calm day, night. Anyways, I'm sitting there on the deck, and this pebble comes from the woods and lands on the deck and comes right down towards my feet. And it's, it's a small pebble. It's like a three-eighths inch pebble. And I look at it, and it stops right by my feet. And I just said, nope. And I turned around, and I faced the other way. I was looking the other way. And I, I guess I didn't want to let them know that I was scared. And somehow, and I don't know how, but I didn't get scared. I turned around, and I was just looking the other way, and I was just thinking, nope, I'm not, not doing it. And then I went back in the sauna and I had an enjoyable sauna and I went back inside and I had a nice evening and nothing else happened that night. Nothing. And it's like, so because you didn't get a reaction, you didn't keep going. I don't know. I don't know what to think of that, but there's no way that pebble came from anywhere else other than a person or something throwing it. Right. I know that for a fact. I don't, I don't need to, prove that to anybody you know what i mean you get to that point where like, i don't care if you believe me or not it doesn't matter to me i don't care right. well, well i, I wish you I, could prove it away i believe you jay and i have had many rocks thrown at me and i guarantee you the accuracy of these creatures if they wanted to take you out with a rock they could take you out well, that makes and, me feel. 
But with you not showing no signs of aggression and getting back in the water, I think that brought that level down as far as what their reaction would be. A lot of times we try to put ourselves in an animal's place, but we really can't. We have no idea uh, right. how they're going to interpret, you know, our reactions. But with you going back and just acting, seeing it and just acting normal, I, I think for one thing, that's a lot of courage on your part to be able to do that. And you should be commended for that. And I, and I would, I would try to, if something like that happens again, I would try to keep that same mindset that you had that evening. And uh, it's just like a soldier that's training. Think about, well, if they do this, this is what I can do to keep the aggression down and because it could just turn into from them banging on the side of your cabin to them just being curious and want to watch you. Yeah. Honestly, I wish it just would all stop. Personally. I, know. I know. Yeah. I mean, I can, from us talking, I can tell, and it just, it breaks my heart that it's getting to the point were there just being asses for lack of a better term. And, you know, I, I know that we haven't really, there, there's so much more that's been happening to you besides this. And, you know, walk us through a little bit of that if you can. And, and with the timeline, cause it's, it just seems like everything's kicking up a notch and kicking up a notch and then they're chilling and yeah. then they're trying to see if they can get a reaction out of you. Well, and, and we should probably go back to, um, we're going to have to get into it. This is, this is the deal. Um, <laughs> I can't make this stuff not happen. And, and people can believe it or not. And I, again, don't really care, but I'm having a lot of orbs stuff going on out there and, and just weird stuff getting caught on my cams. And the only time they're on my cams is when there's an animal present every single time. So, um, if you want to put those pictures up or a couple of those, yeah, let me, uh, I, I was, I was getting ready to do that and, you know, walk and me that, through that before that, that one's later that if you want to okay. skip that one, you know, this, that one, the date is, let's see, there's a, on. there's a bird up in the left hand side there. Can you see that? Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 I can. Okay, so that's the first picture where the bird triggers the deal, and you see that. Well, I'm going to call it an orb because that's what it looks like to me. Now, if you go to the next picture, that orb changes position, and the bird's gone because that's the next picture. Now, these pictures aren't very good because they're pictures of my reader because for whatever reason, I didn't keep the pictures. And I can tell you, I don't know why, but I have erased so many pictures like this it's like I didn't even have control. It's like, like I didn't want to see them, so I erased them. Tons of them. It's happening all the time. Like almost every time I go up there, they're on my cams. Now, when they're on your cams, are, are they jacking with you at the at your at your cabin at all? Sometimes it's it's uh, when I'm there. A lot of times it's not. I don't believe I was there at this time. I, I think it was the next night. I'd have to look mm -hmm. at my calendar. I, I've i started recently. My girlfriend's got me into writing down what goes on up there. Actually, she wrote it down last time. That's um, a great idea to keep a diary, even if yeah. it's like what you said on your calendar. You know. Yeah. Do, just let me ask you this. Have you seen the orbs... I have your own eyes. I haven't, but here's the deal. When it gets dark, I'm inside. I'm not right. out there looking. Right. I'm kind of <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to follow Carrie's trail like that. I don't want to I don't want to know. I don't want to see. I don't want anything to do with them. 
Yeah, it's, it's almost like, like you know, la, 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 la. Uh, yeah, just, you know, that. And that and, don't really bother me in as much as um, they're not, you know, 800 pounds pounding on my shack. So they seem I, I, related. I don't know how or why or whatever, but they seem related. Let me ask you this, uh, Jay. The the pounding on the on the shack was wasn't an isolated incident, was it? No, and and I didn't realize that. And this is where it gets kind of weird. So this was about, and I'd have to ask my girlfriend, but I think it was about a month or two after that had happened. And I had been telling her the story again. You know, she's probably getting tired of hearing it. And uh, and she goes, you know, it kind of bothers me when you talk about that. But, you, you know, you don't talk about the two times it happened when I was there. And I said, what? What, what are you talking about? And she goes, that when you said that deer hit the shack those two times that I was there. And I, I'm like, I got a bad memory, but that's not something I would forget. And... Anyways, she told me that two different times, two different weekends during the night, something that she explained was really heavy hit the back of the shack. And that's when we used to sleep with our heads toward the window. I don't do that anymore. But we used to do that so you could get a breeze and hear what was going on outside, hear the wolves if they were going on or whatever. And uh, she said two different times she woke up or we both woke up or she woke me up. I'm not sure which, but something heavy hit the shack. And she said one of the times I told her, don't worry about it. It was just a deer. And I said, you know me better than that. You know, I would even if I would have thought it was a deer, I would have been out there looking. That's just how I am. Mm -hmm. And there were two separate occasions when that happened. Now, what I do remember, and this has happened when I've been there by myself, too, is I would hear what I thought sounded like a person walking behind that window. And it would be really early, early in the morning. And I, I kind of blew it off because I'm like, man, if somebody's out there, I don't want to get into this right now. <laughs> somebody's exactly. Hand. Or, you know what I mean? I just kind of like, I'm just going to blow this off. I'm just going to go back to sleep. And it was just footfall, like bipedal. I hate saying that word. It sounds so clinical. <laughs> I'm like a person walking. But you wouldn't hear a person walking out there. You just wouldn't. It's You know, you don't make that much noise walking on a lawn. Because that's what it is there. It's, it's my lawn. Mm -hmm. So that happened two different times when she was there. And I have no recollection of it at all which kind of reminds me when that thing was banging on them trees and I couldn't wake my buddy up. But she said that like, I just blew it off. Like it was nothing. Don't remember it. Not a bit. And that freaked me out. Like, am oh. I just so wanting to not hear it that I'm tucking it away somewhere? Or am I, I don't know. I have no idea. Um, I, it, this is the only thing that popped in my head besides the smart act. Alec remark about that's when my wife tells me things when I'm sleeping, I kind of ignore her, but you know, I wonder if you could have been possibly in your early stages of sleep where it's so deep that, you know, that it just didn't, I want to say we're cognizant, but that's not a word. It just, you know, you were just so deep sleep that you didn't catch it. But then at the same time, if I was you, my argument would be, I've been going out there since I've been a kid. I sleep with yep. the windows open. I hear everything because that's what I like. Yeah, exactly. And here's so, the other thing. I don't, I have some physical issues where I don't sleep also. Along with all this stuff that's going on, I barely sleep out there. And, and now, of course, to be fair, that was before this stuff, before the knocking and whatnot. So I wouldn't have been, you know, ignoring as it. hard as falling asleep. Yeah. Yeah. I, you and, know, you'd, you know, you'd be I, listening. I wouldn't have ignored it. I would have gone out and investigated it. Even if I thought it was a deer, 
I just would have gone out and looked because yeah. if a deer hit my shack, something chased it into it. And I would have been interested in that. Like, are the wolves, you know, because I've heard the wolves out in my meadow 50 feet from me taking a deer, you know, trying to take a deer. They didn't get one that night, but they, they had one surrounded. Um, and I, I enjoy that stuff. I can't tell you how many times I've been sitting out there listening to the wolves at night. I mean, we used to go out to the, well, my girlfriend's son went out to his deer stand when the wolves are still howling in the morning, you know, and it's just kind of, it's a little freaky, but it's cool. And you're not worried about them, you know, they're just, they're just doing their thing. Right. So it wouldn't have bothered me to go out. Right. But the way that she describes me blowing it off is like, you know, that's not what I'm like. Something's going on there. I, and I, again, I can't explain that. I don't know. Maybe it was nothing. But again, it's it's all these things getting stacked on top of each other. That really bothers me. No, I, 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 com I completely get that. And I can see where it would be troubling to, especially a place that you love, that you're, you know, you go out there and defrag, you you know, you do the sauna, you, you just chill and, uh, you know, and, and the pictures that you've seen me, it's, it's so beautiful and, and serene. And it's just, it kind of makes you think like you're watching an old, you know, John Wayne movie, you know, the true grit when he's at the very end with Robert Duvall. Uh, it's beautiful. The, uh, you, you know, after that happened, did it kick up anymore? Well, there were, there were other things that were happening to, um, there was stuff happening during the day. I was doing a little project on my, on my deck on the sauna did during the day, middle of the day, summer. And a rock goes banging off the back of my shack where pretty much everything always happens on the back. And again, there's no trees back there. I don't have acorns. I don't have a single tree out there with acorns on it. Something hard hit the back of the shack. And of course, I grab my nine and I go back there and I'm like, man, you guys, and I'm swearing at them. I'm like, you need to leave me the F alone. And I'm just yelling at them, you know. And I'm walking around, and of course, <laughs> you're going to love this, but so I'm emptying rounds in the ground. And I'm like, you guys need to leave me the app alone when I'm here. Just, 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 I'm done with it, you know? And uh, so that was just that one rock. And I don't know anything else that throws rocks. So it's kind of like, it seems like they're testing me. I don't know, like a pebble and then a rock and then. They're like trying all the different things. And I know that sounds crazy, but this whole thing is crazy. So it doesn't really matter, does it? Well, it's but not, it's it, not, it's, it's not, not crazy, crazy to you. Yeah. It's real. And it's just like Bradley said, it's not crazy to you. And it's really happening. And, you know, I, I obviously, you know, t talking to you as, as much as I have and as much as Carrie has, you know, I, I can hear the angst. And I think the people in the audience can hear the angst in your voice. And just, uh, you know, I can tell that you, that you're, you're still, you want to tell more, but then you kind of don't because this is such a, a new setting for you. But yet it's, you know, I know it's, you have, you know, more stuff going on out there. And, and, you know, this isn't your first rodeo in the woods. I mean, you're a woodsman. Yeah. You, right. You, you, you know what you're doing. I grew up as soon as I would get home from school, I would grab my dog and a gun and go out in the woods. You know, I just did. That's what we did. And I've been doing that all my life. And that's why I did this out there. That's why I made this. And I mean, just to, here's a, uh, if you knew me, you would know how messed up this is. I had just gotten a new wheeler, new for me, and I, I brought it out. My buddy was there, the same guy that was there when they pounded on the shack. And I went and picked it up, paid for it, picked it up. It's got a plow and everything. Brought it over there, took it off my wheeler, and put it right in the shed. Because I had no interest in doing anything out in the woods. No interest. I mean, 
normally when you get a new toy like that, you want to go fly down some trails and rip around and yeah. check it out, right? I yeah, did. You want, you want to test it. And I know, Mark, yeah, you're I, getting ready to say something. I just threw it right in the garage, in the shed, and put it away. So, I mean, that kind of tells you where my mind's at out there sometimes. it's, And other times I can go out there and I can have a great day, you know, and nothing happens, and I leave before it gets dark. Um, I don't know. And I've changed how I do things, and I, I've got a hold of uh, Scott Carpenter and talk to him about this stuff because I'm reaching out wherever I can get help, you know, and he gave me some prayers to say, and I'm a Christian guy, so I do that. And I've got sweet grass over my door. I'm doing like, I'm doing stuff that I wouldn't, I wouldn't do just because if it helps even a little bit, I'm going to do it. Even if it's just in my mind. Right. You know, and I'm, when I got the radio on, I'm, I'm listening to the Catholic station really loud. I'm not Catholic. I'm just stuff like that that I'm doing that I just normally wouldn't do. Just yeah, you're, to get you're, you're trying anything. Yeah, I mean, you're throwing every dart you can think of at the wall to hopefully hit on something. Right. In a manner of speaking. And that that shed that I put my wheeler in, I just built that. And I'm the only one that's doing it. And the next day after I'd built it, there was a, a a print on there, like an oily print. And it's still on there today. It's never come off. And I've tried to put my greasy hands on there and make a mark. And, and it doesn't really look like much, but it wasn't on there when I put that door on. Is, it was is that there the picture the, you sent me? Yeah. Okay, let me pull that back up again. It doesn't show okay. like a good print. Well, but you it's, can see... You can see some of it you from the angle. Yeah. Yeah. And that was that wasn't there when I see that screw right above there? I yeah. would have noticed. I would have noticed it. I'm a I'm a bike guy too. So I'm hypersensitive about looking at stuff and I'm a hunter, so I'm hypersensitive in the woods. I notice stuff. So when I saw that the next day, I'm like, what the heck? You know, it's you guys gotta come and mess with my stuff right away just to let me know you know it just gets it gets to you all the all the little stuff right and, 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 I, and you, uh, I'm sorry about, about, I have a apple tree in my yard in town here and just like I'm gonna next time I go up I bring buckets of apples and I throw them in front of my cams because I've got bears galore out there and I got you know every I've got just about every animal on my cams that lives up there on my cams from, from moose to bobcat wolves. You've seen my wolf pictures. They're just everywhere. Bears, whatever. And uh, so I throw them in this area where there's a cam. And it was that weekend, a buddy of mine was there and he was leaving and he was walking out and there's a, there's a little road in between where I used to have, a shack and where I have one now and in between there, there's no cam, but there's cams at my shack and there's cams in this spot. And it's probably, a, you know, 50 yards in between there, mm -hmm. maybe a hundred yards. And, uh, my buddy calls me up and he goes, Hey, did you put a mushroom up in a tree? And I'm like, what? Uh. He goes, you need to, you need to come and look at this. And that's a that mushroom is like five inches long from stem to top. There's not a bite out of it. There's nothing there. And that's right on the edge of a meadow. So if and all we have up there is for squirrels is red squirrels. A, right. they take up little bits and hide them. Even if one could put that up there, they certainly wouldn't because every bird or whatever that wants to eat on that thing is going to eat on it there. It's right at the edge of a meadow. Is that this picture right here, the same tree, or or, yep. or what? Yeah, that's that's like seven feet up where okay. that project thing is. And either a person put it there or something with hands put it there because there ain't no animal that would do that. Right. It right. just ain't. If you're going to hide something, you, you hide it, you know? 
So, I mean, that's just another thing. And I think they thought it was like me giving them apples, which I wasn't, I was bringing it for the bears. So then I had this idea of like doing some gifting and I, I put a, a little platform there and I put a peanut butter jar and I put some, I put a magnet with a picture of a car on it, you know, like a refrigerator magnet. And I put mm -hmm. a guitar and I put a, some beads and I put some other stuff out there. And I think I had it out there for like a couple weeks and nothing happened. And then I thought, you know what? I don't want to mess around like this. I don't want to do this gifting thing. So I took it all down because I just don't want that. I don't want that to become a thing. That's just me. Right. right. I, I just don't. It's, I don't think they're my friends. Friends don't do what, you know what I mean? That's right. just me. I don't want to interact. I want to, you know, you know how if somebody really bugs you and you keep talking to them, they keep talking to you. Yeah. If, if you leave the conversation, conversation over and that's how i want this you know and that's what i'm trying to do it doesn't seem to be working real well but right i mean you know. it's it's there you know the it's, it just sounds like and from us talking the you know the deeper they're getting with you and what i mean by that is you know they're, they're really i don't want to say messing with you but they're getting deep into you know, almost like, let's see what he does. Yeah. And, you know, that's, that's obviously not nice. And a friendly one, you know, friendly clan wouldn't do that. You would think, in my opinion, uh, but who knows? I mean, this is, you know, up for conjecture. If we knew, sure. we wouldn't, we wouldn't be here right now. And, and, you know, we we're already over an hour into this and I know that there's things that that we haven't spoken about and you know we haven't even got to the point of, of taking questions because I know there's so much more that we have to discuss with you know just what's going on and and you know maybe you know talk about some some possible things to try that I mean because because Mark is is you know he knows golly he knows so much more than I do which doesn't say much, but he does. I mean, it, you know, Mark is very quiet, but he, uh, there's times when stuff comes out of his mouth where it's holy Toledo. So, you know, what I, what I would like to, I know, I'm sorry about my, my mic. I'm, I'm catching it from uh, people in the chat, but what I'd like to do, if, if you're okay with it, Jay is, is, you know, have you come back for another, you know, late show appearance you know, with Mark and, and, you know, kind of just get into it a little deeper if, if that's okay with you. If, yeah. If I mean, we haven't even gotten into the crazy stuff yet. So yeah, well, we could d definitely have a part two, but my question to you, Jay, and you don't have to answer it now, but I want you to think about it. And my question is, how can we help you? What can we do to help you with this? And like I said, you don't have to answer it now, but I want you to think about that. Uh, Daniela has a lot of resources. And, and I think it's important that whenever things are happening, and this is what I'm going to call this. This is a nuisance Sasquatch. And so there are people out there that have dealt with these nuisance Sasquatch because they do want to get on with their lives. And they don't want Bigfoot on the brain. They didn't ask for it. They don't want it. Now, it, and how can we help you that maybe that we can come up with some solutions that you can live in with harmony with these animals 
just like you do with the wolves and the bears and the coyotes, that they are not infringing on your privacy. And so it's just something to think about. Uh, there are people here that are willing to help you and come up with some coping skills and come up with some solutions. Yeah, I'm open to, you know, stuff. Um, I, I gotta say, I don't, I don't think it's anything like wolves or bear because I know what they do and, and, you know, they just, uh, they do what they do and it, we've been studying those things. We know what they're like. We know what they do. If you do a, they do B, you know, and right. these things, it's like, there's, it doesn't make sense. None of it. And we haven't even gotten into the weird stuff. No, uh, I know. And, and, and that's, that, that's, what's going to make, we'll just call this part one and, and, you know, part two with you, uh, coming up, I'll talk to Carrie about, about this and, and, you know, cause, and, and I just think, you know, Mark, that's, that's such a great idea that, that you have because, because, because some of the times, you know, a lot of the times when we're discussing stuff like this, we don't think about what can we do to help or, you know, Jay, think about what we can do to help. Uh, and that's so important and, and it gets lost sometimes in this forum. And I know that I don't think about it, you know, and, and I'll just call it on myself. I could do a better job of that. And, you know, but on the other hand, though, too, Jay, we don't have people that come on with nuisance Sasquatch. You know, usually it's, it's an encounter when somebody's hunting, when somebody's doing, you know, something else. And it's more a curiosity Sasquatch than a nuisance one. And, and, and I'll just let everybody know, and this will kind of be a, a good segue and a good way to, to end the show for tonight, you know, there's, there's stuff going on with Jay that, that is just, you know, so perfect for Friday the 13th with the woo type stuff going on. So, you know, Jay, I, I hope you have felt comfortable tonight and Mark, do you have any uh, last things that, that you want to say? And then we'll give Jay the, the last word on this. Uh, I know one little trick that has helped people. And if you will take a, like a bar of soap that's like natural soap, like lava or something like that, and you can rub that on the trees that are close to your house, and that will be a deterrent for them to come up and hit the side of the cabin because uh, what we feel that happens with that is they lose their sense of smell. They can't smell because of the deodorant in the soap and most animals, that's a sense that they use and it's important to them to be able to wind anything that might come around them so uh that's just one thing that you might want to try that we have seen success with in the past well i, I can tell you what um soap companies uh they should uh prepare because i'll be coming out and buying plenty of that <laughs> well i, 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 I gotta tell you property, man you know, I, I saw a comment in the chat that I just, I, it, it swung by so fast. I mean, we've had over 600 people in chat tonight. And, you know, a, a comment that I was like, yeah, you're right. You know, other people have nuisance Sasquatch. And without yeah. a doubt, it's, yeah. it's, my comment was more to the fact that, you know, a, some people, well, I, I, I can name a few that have had, but, you know, typically a lot of people don't really want to talk about it at some point. And, you know, that's what we're trying to do here is, you know, obviously make you comfortable, Jay, for, for having the courage to come on here and, you know, just to talk about it. But, you know, so I'm not, 
saying that, that people don't have nuisance Sasquatches. It just seems, you know, a lot of people hold that more to the vest. And, you know, I, I can feel your frustration. And, you know, I'll just, do you have anything you want to say before we uh, scoot a doodle on down the road? Um, well, I just, I appreciate you guys. And uh, especially the time with uh, Carrie and you, Brad, um, probably got about six hours combined with you guys on the phone. And, and uh, you know, it, it all, it all helps and it, it doesn't make it go away. And it's not going to make, I'm thinking about going up there this weekend. I don't know if I'll, I talked to my it's buddy so and he's probably be willing to stay overnight, but I don't know if I, you know, I always think that. And then I get there and I get, start getting dark and I'm, you know, once you're there, you're there and, and I won't get into, you know, the other stuff, but um, right. I don't know, but it, it helps talking about it to people that have had the experience and like Carrie, like, I don't want, I don't want nothing to do with these things. I'm not interested in finding them. I pray to my God that I don't ever see one. And that's a prayer that I have an honest prayer that I have usually daily because I don't know what's going to happen. If I do, this is bad enough for me as far as messing up my hunt and, and everything else. And I'm trying to deal with that. But, um, you know, the, the thing, and, and I don't mean to make light of this, because I, I don't want any kind of experience like Carrie had or people like that. Mm -hmm. You get to leave that area. This is my land. I've got blood, sweat, and tears and time into this. Yeah. And it's not a hunting area that I can leave and not go back to. Because I'll tell you what, I probably wouldn't be talking to anybody. I just would have left. But this stuff is ongoing, and I, I don't see it stopping. I pray that it does. I, I actually do pray that it does, but I, I don't know. Well, I, I tell you what, we'll get in uh, hopefully within the next week, you know, talking behind the scenes and, and Jay, please, please don't hang up when I in the broadcast. Uh, but, you know, first off, I want to thank, you know, Mark with uh, beast TV for co-hosting with me tonight. I mean, Mark, it, it's just, uh, it's so much a pleasure to get to look at your mug when, <laughs> when we're doing this and, and hear the wisdom and the haikus of Sasquatch. So, uh, thank you. Well, the privilege is all mine, Bradley. Well, and, and again, thank you, Jay, for coming on and, and thanks for everybody in the chat. We I said, I looked up and we were over at 600 just a few minutes ago. And, and that's, you know, just very humbling. And, and thank you for that. And again, we'll, uh, we'll have Jay, we'll, we'll, We'll make an announcement about, you know, depending on schedules and whatnot. But Jay definitely has to come on again just because we haven't gotten to the meat of what's going on with him. So with that being said and done, everybody have a good evening. And again, Mark, thank you. And Jay, again, thank you. And everybody be safe. Thanks. Thank you, guys.